there are many ways that people talk about relational theory. And um, I think the idea that's most appealing is this idea that we want to focus on a relational process. It's like we together in this room, we together in this classroom, we together in the street uh, recognize something special in the way we are together. And uh, I think that, that it's different from many views of relational process where the emphasis is on me to you and you to me. In this version, it's the between that's the exciting thing. And then what is the super exciting thing for me is that who we become as an individual happens in the timing and spacing and in the locale of the relational process. What I find most useful about this idea is that if you explore a relational experience and you feel like, I didn't really like who I was in that meeting, you, instead of saying, what, what is wrong with me? What's weird about me? What's defective? You might say, what went on in that room? What was it the relational process that led me into being dominating or quiet or unhelpful or rude or arrogant? It was like a coming together of the whole relational process. And through that, I became. So, so the idea of re-examining yourself and a circumstance and a group in terms of relational process rather than individual input is a very liberating and I think kind of novel idea. Um, I want to add to that that I am very interested now in not the people who are present per se, but the chairs and the room and the weather and the uh, location and the time of day and whether there's sun glaring in or whether you're freezing and, and you just wanted everything to get over with so you could leave. And that will all make a difference. And, and about food and plates and ways of eating and um, all the things that you do in, in an embodied way, in an embodied circumstance, in a physical reality that contribute to the relational process. I think we have to see ourselves in relation to the objects. For example, this chair that I'm sitting on, it's pretty comfortable and I think I'd feel fine and not pay much attention to my relationship to this chair. But if I had a back problem, after a while I would be thinking about my body and how it is, can I say I'm in relation to my body? I'm not sure I want to say that. I want to say that me in a totality begins to be uncomfortable in this chair. Um, and I think the same could be said for other things. The other thing, of course, is that you're in relationship to your memories of the chair or the room. I mean, I feel familiar in this room in a way because in some sense I have been here before. And am I having a relationship not only to the room at present, but the room I once was in? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> that gets very complicated. But I do think relational process, in a sense, takes into account the past as well as the present. So in that way, uh, it's a very complicated thing to try to analyze what are we talking about when we talk about relational process. Let's say a group of 12 people have come together to have lunch. And they stand and they say, well, where would you like us to sit? Because I have all these views about how people
table should sit and who should sit where. And I have like a little thought plan of, and things that I've read, research I've read about placement and what it means for people to be placed at a table. And, uh, and so then I feel like by placement you create the dynamic for what could be the relational process that could be at stake. And how you put your classroom together or how you have a play group put together, you create through the things that are there the opportunities for relating.